Welcome back, folks, to more Let's Play Swords and Sandals Medieval. In the last episode, we, uh, well, we did our last tournament. Now we're moving on to, uh, trying to get the tournament 13 here. We, well, our local band is missing a lutist, so I have to offer my skills as a musician. I didn't know Pirate Fro played the lute. Apparently he does. All right, Lorato Castillo, our next opponent. He parries the first shot and gets a crit off me. Oh no! He could actually beat me here! Oh, oh. Hang on. Nope. The alert of Fro has happened again. And he has been defeated. Good start, though. Good start. I was actually mildly worried for about a couple of seconds there. Fair play. And we get nothing. That's fine. I hire some minstrels to play for the local children. Probably playing the loot again, knowing me. Lord Lionel Botha, our next opponent. Really mediocre stats. Oh, he's, he's coming straight in. And he's straight out. <laughs> because he went for a cleave. I admire... I admire him for that. I admire him for going for it. Because at the moment we are... We haven't been defeated in so long, you know. Oh, we lost a luck. After a cat scratches me for rescuing it from an oak tree. Should have bloody left it there, mate. Just, just leave it there. Lord Leonard Sellers. Wrong button. There we go. Doom. Afternoon tea. Afternoon tea. Time. Smack. Dead. I gotta try and do something in this bloody let's play, really, haven't I? I gotta give it a go. Alright. So, moving on. More battles. We are getting a bit fatigued now. Ah, gold. Very nice. That's gonna pay for our rest at the tavern. Bloody hell. Crazy Sir Nicholas Mercia. Is this a special character? Is this a legend? Like a legendary character? No. He was red! I thought he was! Never mind. Huh. Alright. I thought he was just because of the fact that he was red. Oh well. Alright. Ah anyway, uh, well, we'll just go to sleep. Dream of beer. Best, be best dream in the world. I, for example, am drinking an alcoholic beverage at the moment because it's Good Friday and sod it, there's nothing else to do. Well, apart from doing this, obviously. So I'm drinking a lovely Di Serrano and Coke. Pint glass, obviously, because I could hold my liquor. Yeah. So. Well, spirits, I guess. All right. Moving on. Again, we get nothing for that, but it's fine. It's fine. Our next opponent is Lord de Gore Jevons. He is bloody st I Look how big I am. Look how big Pirate Fro is. He's huge. He is a massive mountain of a man. All right, so actually, uh, something I do want to say is I have noticed, uh, well, once we finish our level up, uh, but something I've noticed as we're now Grand Marshal, we get uh, 20,000 gold and 100 stars for that, and we will be increasing vitality. We get an extra star for being Grand Marshal. Uh, quest time. Let's see what we're going to get on this quest. A burly lumberjack approaches you in the forest of thick pine trees. He's sweating profusely under the heat of the sun. Care to make some coin? Help me chop down some of these trees this afternoon. I'll reward you handsomely. Do we decline the offer of work or aid the a lumberjack in chopping trees? We aid him. Right, you accept the lumberjack's offer and he hands you an axe. Well, we're certainly used to holding an axe at this point. You both set to work under the hot summer sun. The work is challenging and laborious, but working together, you manage to fell a good number of trees. For your, for your efforts, you are rewarded with a small pouch of gold. Your physical exert have also made your muscles notably stronger. Our strength has increased by three like it needed to go up anymore. And we got 10,100 gold for that. Very nice. All right, so something I did notice actually is... I've got a max critical hit chance. Hang on. Yeah, I've got a max critical hit chance, apparently. But before this, I think it was about 40-odd, but it was still at about 40-odd. So, what I'm thinking is that was my initial critical hit chance, and the axe just gave me an extra 20%, so that's probably why I was hitting so often. That would make sense. So, that's the reason for that. Anyway, let's go do a tournament! Tournament number 13. Nearly there. We're very close. We're against a golden god. The throne of the lion. 65 stars for entry, 130 stars for victory. Let's go and take out this golden god. Fucking guy. 
The throne of the lion. The day has arrived. The great King Richard, also known as the lion. Ah, it's Richard. Okay, that makes sense. Also known as the Lionheart, is on the move to the Holy Land. En route, he wishes to first stop in your town to test his mettle against you. No doubt he believes he will succeed where so many great knights have fallen. He has every right to think so, for the Lionheart is unmatched in battle and you feel a tinge of fear as he, de as he descends upon the town with his elite knights in tow. No, no. There's no fear in Pirate Fro's eyes. Sir Manfred of London is our first opponent. There's no fear in the eyes of Pirate... Well, I guess the eye of Pirate Fro, because he's only got one. So, yeah. No, no fear in the eye, the eye of Pirate Fro. As it comes to Manfred of London, lots of fear for him. 367 damage, and 255 to finish him off. No crits there. So I'm not sure why I've got the... Why it said the max crit chance. Because I'm not getting crits at the moment. Alright, next opponent. Eight fights until Richard the Lionheart. So Michael Wright, I remember you. With your crusty the clown hair. Sprack. For 248 damage. With Sir, Fro with Sir Pirate Fro riding on Nightmare. And we'll just go smack and he's dead. So there's a crit for you. If he just had an extra two health points, he'd have survived that. True, he would have done nothing with it, but still. Seven fights until Richard the Lionheart. Next opponent is Sir Remy Marshall. I remember you. I think I just remember all these guys. Bar that first guy. I don't remember him. I don't remember fighting him at all. 186 damage. It's not bad. It's not too shabby at all, I guess. All I just need to do is get a crit, though. There you go. That'll do it. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe they shouldn't increase your critical hit chance. Oh, no, no. As I said, there were a lot of things that they could do to make this game tougher. I mean, even on normal mode, this is... This is simple for me. You know, as I said, I, I'm a Swords and Sandals veteran at this point. I deserve more competition! I demand more competition. Pelius Baxter is not going to be that competition! Damn! Nearly 1,200 points of damage! That's because he revealed my afro. That's why. He got a grievous hit to the face. Five fights until Richard the Lionheart. My next opponent is... Ah, Tierney of the Green. I fought you like twice already. I'll fight you again. By the way, I've noticed my strength is 49. 49 strength. No wonder. No wonder I'm an absolute... Hulking tank straddling the battlefield. It's not surprising. The amount of damage I'm doing. Nearly 800 damage with a crit on armor. So we're doing pretty well so far, I'd say. Four fights until Richard the Lionheart. My next opponent, it, Jeremy. Yeah, I remember you as well. Has this guy just got the same as what the other guy had? That bastard, the one that wanted to close the tavern down. Him. You remember, you remember him? Oh, you don't. Doesn't matter, nor do I. Anyway, so we're just gonna... <laughs> Jeremy's there going, oh for god's sakes, why am I going against this guy again? All these guys are just trembling in fear, just going, okay, fine, just get it over with. Just get get my death over with, fine. Yep, Dev Desavona, I remember you as well. I'm just getting some repeats now of characters. Boom! 248 damage from Nightmare. And the horse. And me. Mostly the horse. I actually blocked my first shot. Didn't block the second one, though. I'm just getting five stars around now. Like, if anyone actually survives five rounds with me, I'm shocked. Just because of how overpowered we are at the moment. Two fights until Richard the Lionheart. Godric Spears. Again, I remember you. Let's go for a quick attack this time. For fun! Boom. 103 damage. Okay. So I'm not, so I'm not doing too much extra damage from actually going for the power attack. There you go. There goes pretty much all, there goes all your armor in one hit. And a quick attack to finish. I do 127 damage on my quick attack. 127 damage on a crit. On a quick attack. It's insane. One more fight until Richard the Lionheart. And it's a Cedric Travers, the professor. We remember him. Yes, there's no... Uh, I guess there's no point going for power, but sod it. I'm just going to show off my skills. At it. And do damage. And see them flying through the air and then randomly turn up on the castle walls. To then die at the hand of my hammer. Another five stars for victory. Another 10,000 gold for victory as well. Very nice. And the Knight of Legend number 13, Richard the Lionheart. You will not, sh you will not uh, hold back or show no mercy. I'm sure he won't. However, as he wondered that his stats are bloody awful in comparison to mine. So he's dying today. 
Yep, I've shown off your, your hair. Your gorgeous hair. I've taken your armor off. There goes your armor. There goes some of your, there goes half your health. There goes another half of your health. Attacks do half damage. That's fine. You're still dead via critical hit. And I took maybe 60 or 70 damage there. Against Richard the Lionheart. You are screwed and defeated as well. Tournament number 13 complete. Defeat in the tournament did not define Richard's career. The Lionheart won many more battles. Conducted a, a highly successful crusade. Earned the respect of the great Saladin. Killed an awful lot of people. Guilty and incident alike. And set the gold standard for awesome nicknames. Alas for him, he died in 1199, the victim of a stray crossbow bolt to the neck in the siege of an obscure castle called Chalice Chabrol. I think I pronounced that right, I'm not sure. As it's often the way with great warriors, it was an oddly unimpressive death. <laughs> Poor guy. Alright, two tournaments to go. We have uh, got over half a million in the bank, that's an extra star for me. And we are now level 41, Grand Marshal Aspirant. And we get 62 stars for that. Very nice. Right, well, it's gonna be it's gonna be wits, I guess. Why not? We'll increase wits a bit more. Because my vitality is doing fine at the moment, so wits is probably good to increase. We'll venture. Right. Uh, after a tough day of jousting, you make your way to the inn for a night of merriment. Of course you do. You dug down an alleyway you uh, believe to be a shortcut and come across a little kitten crying in the gutter. She appears to be cold and hungry and in desperate need of aid. Aid the little kitty cat with warm milk and hugs. Or scare off the mangy cat with a hissing sound. We will aid you! And I lost an agility point. Apparently I stole some of my gold, but it didn't. Ah, oh, well. You bend down to pick up the kitty and you're suddenly set upon by a wild gang of tomcats called the Backstreets. The Backstreet Scratches. Looks like a classic textbook cat ambush, and you walks right into it. The cats scratch you up good and steal some of your gold before dispersing as quickly as they came. Apparently none of my gold was stolen, but I lost an agility point, which sucks, but it's fine. Yes! There you go. Now we got some more walls. Symmetrical walls. It's exactly what we want. Symmetrical walls. Alright. Well, with, uh, with so much money in the bank right now... What can we do with it? The answer is nothing. We're doing some more fights. Ah, experience points. 216. Very nice. That's going to get me towards the next tournament, which I need to be level 43 for. And it's uh, tournament number 14. The penultimate tournament in the game. Can't wait for that. To maybe try and find a challenger for me. Because at the moment, I'm getting no challenges. No challenges. Just no challenges or death. Loads of death. No challenges. Right, we'll move on, do another fight. Ah, more experience points. Good, that's going to get me uh, closer and quicker to the next tournament. Lord, Lord Sherlock Swift. He has more strength than... He has the same amount of strength than we do. Oh, God. Okay, I survived. Oh, please tell me an anvil lands on him. Come on. Yep, yeah, screw you. You deserve that. You deserve the anvil, mate, for trying that. Yes, it's the only way to probably beat me, but still, you suck for doing that. Right, with him out of the way, his amazing strength, he didn't even bleed and use it. We get more experience there, very nice. Very nice indeed. Lord Wilfred Lacoste is our next opposition. See, this is why we need to finish off our opponents fast. You know, so they don't get the chance to use that horrible, horrible bloody thing. Do you know what I want? I want a member of my entourage that prevents me from falling off cliffs. That would be great. That's what I'm looking for. That'd be awesome. Ah, some food. Ah, oh, yes, some food. Pra, no, no. Give me back my money. Anyway, Guy Shalvin is our next opponent, and he's dead. <laughs> oh, it's just getting simple now. Bar, bar that, that, what, that is the one way to beat me, but that's why I've got some luck in tow. Why not? Grand Marshal Errant. Firework avoidance increased. Oh, don't give a damn about that bollocks. That bollocks. All right, we'll increase our agility back up. Uh, from the one we missed, from the one we lost via the cats. And we will increase our vitality as well. More quests. High in the snowy passes, you find yourself in deep trouble. You have not eaten in some time, and you are greatly weakened by cold. Over the howling wind, you hear a low, muffled, groaning voice. Seemingly coming up from the ice below your feet. Suddenly, the fingers of a hand are horribly, 
a horribly frostbitten hand, blue, green, withered, pierces the ice. There's someone down there. Dig away the snow, wrap the poor man in animal pelts and drag him to a sheltered cave. Or realise the man is doomed and resign yourself to snacking on his corpse. Yeah, we'll try and dig him out. Alright, at first light, you awake to the sound of his croaking voice. My unknown benefactor, my name is Constantine. By what means you've come to save me, I know not, but know this, I am truly grateful. Please take this small gift as a token of my appreciation. Be careful with it, it's rather fragile. He hands you a few glass flasks and a bag of coins. Got 5,618 gold for that, and three elixirs of vitality. Very nice. Very nice. There you go, helping out your fellow man. I have, uh, my, my ways of just stealing stuff is gone now, since I've got everything I need. Lord Godefroy Bohun. Bohun? Bohun. He's our next opponent. He's got good wit, so I'll give him that. He's got really good wit, so maybe difficult to hit him. Never mind, I actually destroyed him. Never mind that. That's a bit awkward. All right, <sighs> moving on. Ah, bone tide. I need to go to the tavern to sleep. We've got so much gold that we don't even know. We don't even know what to do with it. We don't even know what to do with all this stuff. Please tell me there's a challenge. Please tell me there's a challenge. I, I really like a challenge. No. Damn. Oh <laughs> well. Uh, maybe if I let's play this like when it came out, I probably would have got. A, I probably would have been able to do some of those or something like that. But nah, missed out. Would be great though. Jermaine Duffer. Duffer. Duff. You. Great jump. And shove you. <laughs> you jump over me. I shove you into the water. You sank like a stone and died. So, take that. It's Elevenses. And more experience. That's really nice. That is really nice. Right, next opponent. Sir Lucas O'Shannon. Our next opposition. Smack. He's dead. Immediately. Ah, uh, alright. Drinky gourd for that. Drinky gourd. Very nice. Very nice. Exactly the way I want it. Because I made it, because I did it myself. All you need a decanter of De Serono, some Pepsi, and some ice. That's all you need. Mad Lord Axel de Corbin. Okay. He's actually going for me. Oh, I'll shove him. Oh. How dare you? Just shoved. There you go. <laughs> you shouldn't have run right next to me. Now I now I know my strength is good enough to just shove people straight off the map. A new weapon in the arsenal. Like we needed one. Like we needed one. Oh. A burly drunk boast that you can out-wrestle anyone. You take up his offer and his boast proves true. I lose one strength. That sucks. Ah, oh, well. Lord Alfredo Popov. Well, he can certainly pop off this mortal coil if he wants to. Indeed, he will. <laughs> he can and he shall. Yes. And level up. So, next episode, we'll be doing the next, the penultimate tournament. Very nice. And we got some... Uh, we got some stars for that. Grand Marshal Bachelor, level 43. I'm going to increase my strength back up. Actually, sorry, I'm going I'm to shove it all into strength just so I can shove people off a bit easier. Quest time! You come across a beggar by the roadside, hunched over a sparsely occupied begging bowl. The crusades took my sight! A sign reads over his head. <coughs> Ugh. The crusades also took my voice for some reason. Other passers-by throw him coins, but you seem to notice that he's moving the bowl ever so slightly, but most adroidly to catch some incoming donations. Toss the beggar a few coins yourself and move on, or beat the con artist for his insolence. I'll toss him a few coins. I got money. I'm good. I'm good. Bloody hell, my firework... <laughs> well! My firework avoidance is increased by five! I'm immune to fireworks, so that, like, that matters. You toss the coin to the bowl and briefly make eye contact with the beggar, who is in the moment has raised his head to look at you. A flicker of a smile passes over his features. He places a piece of paper on the ground and grunts, Take it! You pick it up. It is a proverb of wisdom. Reading it, you feel enriched. We actually got a lot of gold as well. I wanted to lose gold, not gain it. Alright, day 84 of my quest. And I immediately go need to go to the tavern to rest up. Oh, well... 
We'll do one more battle and then we'll uh, go for a break, I believe. Ah, three more luck. What strange dream? What strange things you dream of, you cannot say. Don't want to know what you're dreaming about, Pirate Fro. Certainly do not want to think about that. Right, let's do some more battles. Ah, no, it's a tournament. Of course it is. All right, well, we'll go for a break here then, uh, if that's the case. And the music's still going on. That's fine. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go for a break here, folks. But in the next episode of Let's Play Swords and Sandals Medieval, tournament number 14, the penultimate tournament of the game. I'll see you then.